you know, why are we, you know, spending hours in the practice room every day? It's, you know, whatever you do, uh, do it as unto the Lord. Uh, so uh, that's our motivation uh, to be excellent. And, you know, we can't be lights out into the world, out into the world of opera and um, other areas of music without first being able to get there. Mm -hmm. So we have to have this level of excellence so that we can go out and, and be that light uh, to those who need it. David Kirkwood is Assistant Professor of Music at the HBU School of Fine Arts. Professor Kirkwood's primary teaching focus is vocal arts. When you hear him sing, you'll know why, and opera. His areas of research and interest include sacred music, literature, and musical aesthetics. He's previously taught at Biola University. Welcome, David. Thank you. I'll tell you what, sincerely, I've listened to you sing, and you are fantastic. Thanks very much. Now, before we're done, I'm going to have you sing something. <laughs> I mean it. i got to hear you sing again. Last oh, okay. time you sang, I just had tears in my eyes listening to you. I appreciate that. Great gift you had. Thank you. So how'd you discover music? I just always loved uh, to sing. It's kind of how I dealt with uh, growing up and, you know, emotions going through, through adolescence. And it was always a, a big part of my life, uh, but I'd never studied it formally until going to uh, my undergraduate degree. And so who were the mentors that took you from this singing child to studying? Right. So uh, my worship pastor at church, kind of when I was a senior, I, I joined the adult choir and we, I had my first experience of classical music, uh, Handel's Messiah. Mm. And so great first experience. It kind of opened my eyes like, wow, there's something other than like the, the contemporary Christian or the, uh, you know, classic rock and roll that I would that I would listen to and you know people can do this type of thing with their voice I'm like wow okay maybe I should get some voice training and um, so he helped me learn a couple classical music songs and then I auditioned at, at places and ended up going to Biola and ended up falling in love with this uh, kind of classical style of singing. Mm -hmm. Classical music does carry with it such a tremendous message and a mm -hmm. culture and a class. I mean, For sure. It's powerful, isn't it? Oh, very powerful. Now, yes. so from Biola, postgraduate work, where? Uh, so from Biola, uh, my wife and I did our master's at Johns Hopkins at the Peabody Institute of Music and started a, uh, a, a doctoral degree there, um, and then children came <laughs> and took a break for a while, and then we, we eventually met our way uh, back out to Biola University, and I was uh, teaching there in the Honors College and kind of just adjunctly in the music department and was able to kind of restart and finish my, um, my DMA uh, in, in voice at the University of Southern California. Now, what goes into a DMA in voice? I mean, I can only imagine. Well, so you're, you're required to do uh, several uh, full recitals or possibly um, major opera roles uh, that could that could also count so about four or five different recitals so it's just an hour long of solo music that's kind of curated with different uh, various styles and and uh, genre uh, and then at, at USC I was uh, I had to specialize in in three kind of minor field areas uh, so I chose arts leadership and uh, sacred music and then a field outside of music was uh, English literature, because I was also teaching in the honors program at that time. So you're, you're used to just like singing at any time, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, you, usually. And of course, in every day uh, when you're um, teaching students, you have to uh, be able to demonstrate well. So, okay, so yeah, I'm definitely singing you've got to sing something for me before we go on. Okay. Come on. Did you, really? You, yeah, I, you can do it. I know you can. Okay. What, what's today? It's today <laughs> today's the first first day of May, right? So, so there's a there's a Schumann song uh, about the month of May. Okay. So I'll just sing a line for it since you're twisting my arm. <laughs> And um, it, it goes, in the wondrously beautiful month of May, when all the, the flowers were blooming, then in my heart, love also awakened, or something like that. 
im wunderschönen Monat Mai, als alle Knospen sprangen, da ist in meinen Herzen die Liebe aufgegangen. And that's the first one. So there you go. <laughs> you twisted my arm and now that, I did it. That was okay. wonderful. That's all you get. If you want to yeah. hear me more, you got to <laughs> come to my faculty recitals, yeah. which we do in the, yeah. in the fall semesters. Well, I mean, that obviously transitions us to, you know, HBU School of Fine Arts. Mm -hmm. Tell us everything going on and where you're involved. All right, so I am the kind of the vocal area coordinator in, uh, in the Department of Music, and so I uh, oversee uh, quite a few of our students in their vocal development, preparing them for recitals and competitions, and we've had some great, really great success recently, and um, s some students giving just really fabulous recitals, just really high level. I've been really proud of them, and we've had successes in, in competitions, in the, uh, the most recent uh, competition that we've done in the greater Houston area. Um, you know, we've we had quite a few students uh, place in the top three. Really? Uh, yeah, two. two uh, we had a junior uh, a women who uh, placed first. Actually, we had first, second, and third place from HBU. And I also had a, uh, a sophomore man who who placed first in his division. And so um, it, it, that's just evidence of that we're doing quality work here. Yeah. And so I mean, in your colleagues, to, uh, give describe your colleagues to us. Oh, uh, we're a really great tight-knit uh, group. Uh, I really have enjoyed um, being with all my colleagues. They've been, they were so welcoming to me um, when I first came in, and, and now we're, we're all chums, and you know, I'll, I'll go over to my uh, colleague's office and you know, um, just chat. You know, we, just, we just like being around each other, so mm -hmm. it's very collegial. Um, you know, we're not territorial at all. We're, we share ideas and, and techniques, and For, it's good. Frequently, I hear the theme here about HBU being a family. Yeah, for sure. And I'm sure you've probably experienced that. Why should a student uh, look at HBU School of Fine Arts, prospective student? Yeah, well, one, uh, you know, we're doing, we're doing great things. We're doing great work. We're, we're having students go out and do great things. Um, not only vocally, but also in academics. You know, we just are having a, a student graduate and, and getting a, um, a uh, uh, teacher's assistantship in musicology at University of Houston. And we had another one a couple oh. of years before go up to the University of North Texas and get a teaching assistantship. Uh, I, a couple of years ago, sent off uh, my star tenor to Yale University with a full, full ride, room and board, everything. And um, he was also uh, a, a fi top 10 finalist at the uh, great, uh, Houston Grand Opera Concert of Arias, which you know, hundreds of people apply to. Yeah. Um, so you know, they can see that the, we're doing good work. So if you come here, you know that you're going to get great instruction, uh, both uh, in your applied area and in uh, the academics. So, and plus, it's a small school, it's a small community, so you're gonna get all that personal attention as well. And that personal attention has to make the difference in this area, just like in any other, no doubt. Oh yeah, for sure, you know, and the, the students, we often just, they come in and, and have a chat, or, you know, I'm, I'm available, and we're all available, you know, if they just need to message us about, about something, and. Uh, so we know where they are, we know what they're, they're going through, and we can be mentors uh, to them in that way also. How important has your faith, and you know, like in the arts, I mean, faith has had a tremendous impact in the history of music. Oh, yes. Uh, how essential is your faith to you and, and the whole orientation of the Christian worldview? Yeah, I think it, it, it goes to, to, the, uh, to the motivation, you know, why are we, you know, spending hours in the practice room every day. It's, you know, whatever you do, uh, do it as unto the Lord. Uh, so uh, that's our motivation uh, to be excellent. And, you know, we can't be lights out into the world, out into the world of opera and um, other areas of music without first being able to get there.
-hmm. So we have to have this level of excellence so that we can go out and, and be that light uh, to those who need it. And you came to faith in Christ how? Oh, when I was, when I was a child. Mm -hmm. we, we, my, my parents um, kind of uh, were serious about their faith um, in their mid-20s. And so, um, you know, I've always had a strong uh, Christian, Christian background and went to a Christian school and, and went to church all, all, all growing up and made my personal decision when I was um, just a, a young adolescent around age 11. Now, Houston Baptist University has the advantage of being in Houston. Yes. And uh, from a music standpoint, that puts it in a whole nother world. Yes. Can you describe that for prospective student or parent? Well, yes. Like if you know, s some schools are, are are large and they have huge programs, but they're out in the middle of nowhere. Right. And so any music making is only going to be at the collegiate level, and some some level is very high at some schools. But you know, we have so many other opportunities uh, for our students because not only can they go and see great opera at a top five opera house in the country at Houston Grand Opera and the great things that are going on at the at the the symphony and the ballet but there's also so many uh, regional orchestras opera companies choirs that the students can get involved in plus there's so many opportunities for church ministry for yeah. our students I'd say a majority of our students are are leading worship in a church or being in the choir at a church or a section leader in the choir. And a lot of these are scholarship positions at some of these choirs. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so there's just so many musical opportunities in uh, Houston. I, I'm interested to know, like, when you and your wife want to go see, you know, an opera, or what do you guys like to enjoy? Well, my mm. wife, my wife is a pianist, okay, uh, and she always plays for me at, at our recitals. Oh, and neat. sometimes we share the recital because she's she's quite amazing at the piano. So she plays a solo piece, and I'll sing, and then she'll accompany me on a solo piece. So, um, uh, so since she is an instrumentalist, she often likes to go uh, to the symphony, uh, especially if they're doing a, like a piano concerto. Yeah. Um, I of course I, I like to go to the opera. Uh, we don't get. A whole lot of opportunities to do that with three children. <laughs> it's hard to get out, but but when we do, it's always it's always a, a great experience. And who are some of the icons in your field that you look up to? Oh, I I really love uh, a lot of the um, you know the classic singers from a generation or, or two past. Um, some of the great uh, leader singers, uh, the German song singers like Fritz Wunderlich and Dietrich Fischer-Dieskau, and, and of course the great uh, tenors of the, of the past like Pavarotti and, and people like that. So I, I kind of like those kind of the classic singers, but there's some really great people uh, nowadays. And actually quite a few of my uh, colleagues uh, from the schools that I've been at are having great successes. So it's always fun to, to, yeah. to see them and, and see what they're doing. Uh, Christy and I were in Zurich and we went to the opera in Zurich. And it was a beautiful snowy night, but man, what, mm. it just an unbelievable uh, atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Is there, do you have to have something of an intellect or culture to appreciate uh, classical music? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think if you have studied like the, the theoretical things behind it or the, the culture, I think that experience is deepened, but I think mm -hmm. anyone uh, can go to an opera. I mean, I didn't know anything about opera until I went to college, but I went to my first uh, show, I think it was Puccini's La Boheme, and it was it a was very moving experience, and, you know, I, this is someone who's in, enjoyed music, but, uh, you know, just starting to study it. You know, and I think if people, I think people have the idea that they're not going to like it, because it's like, oh, it's you know, it's classical music. I don't, I don't like that stuff. But I think if they actually experience it, it can be right. kind of mind blowing and and eye opening uh, for them. And that's that's why we we do things like music appreciation at our school, and it's in the core curriculum. And it's really fun uh, when you do get to teach those courses when when people have mm -hmm. those experiences. They're like, wow, I never knew that this type of thing existed. Describe, if you would, the, the curriculum that a student would 
uh, participate in in the HBU School of Fine Arts, undergraduate and graduate? Uh, well, I'll talk about the, the music area, of sure. course. Uh, so they have a strong foundation in, in the theoretical studies, so um, two to three years in music theory and uh, two years in music literature and history. And then if you are studying performance, uh, say vocal performance, what I do, so you obviously have uh, private voice lessons and coachings with a professional uh, pianist uh, for every semester that you're here. Mm -hmm. And then we also do um, voice specific courses, like I teach uh, a diction, so lyric diction in Italian and German and French and Spanish and sometimes we'll, we'll get into Russian or Czech or something like that. But uh, because you have to um, not only be able to have good technique, but you have to know what you're saying to express it fully and you have to be able to say it very well. Um, because there's nothing worse than, than uh, having an American accent when you're singing your German songs. Yeah. Uh, but we also teach the students how to teach the voice in vocal pedagogy. And then we also do a, uh, like a survey course of the history of uh, solo song with piano accompaniment mm. for, for two semesters. And, and that's undergraduate, correct? That's undergrad. And uh, for the music department, we, uh, we are purposefully only undergrad at, at this point um, because that way, you know, all of our professors are professors. We don't have any grad assistants that are right. teaching the students. So it's all professors teaching the students. It's all the undergrad students getting those opportunities for a choir. You know, if, you're, if you have grad students, that's, that's wonderful, but they're the ones that are going to get the roles in the opera production. Right. They're the ones that are going to get the solos in the choirs. And then from a vocational standpoint, I, I come here and I get my bachelor's in the HP School of Fine Arts. Vocationally, what are the opportunities? Where do you, I mean, you've cited a couple here mm -hmm. during our talk, but where, where do the students end up vocationally? So we have a number of people pursuing music education. Mm -hmm. And so those people, it, come out already certified to teach and so a lot of them just go really? straight into teaching uh, either at the elementary or the secondary uh, level um, so that's one thing uh, the the people who are really outstanding in either their academic area or their performance area most likely will go on to grad schools and we've had great success um, um, sending our students to grad schools the ones who are who are going one uh, one of our graduating seniors has just got a scholarship to the University of Texas at Austin. So that's where he's going. Um, but a lot of people like to, uh, because of their great love for music, uh, but they're also interested in other areas like medicine or um, pre-law or, or psychology. And so we have a Bachelor of Arts degree that allows for a person to double major, or at least uh, get a minor in that field. And uh, it's kind of interesting, but, but a lot of grad schools, like law schools or medical schools, will um, find it very intriguing that someone has an arts background, because they're, you know, it, it's just, it, it develops uh, creative thinking and creative problem solving mm -hmm. and a very strong work ethic because you know you got to be in the practice room for hours a day and so all of these are transferable skills to um, many areas that that our students go into excellent uh, we've been talking to david kirkwood and he is the assistant professor of music in the hbu school of fine arts uh, dr kirkwood uh, has uh, ministered through music in a, such a powerful, anointed way. So tell me your vision for the future, where your career is now and mm -hmm. where you envision it going. Um, so, I mean, obviously we want to continue to teach and to build uh, voices uh, that are capable of going on to the next level. And, um, you know, I, I, I give a faculty recital every fall, so I keep up with my performance, and hopefully I'll be um, um, singing more around, around the Houston area and see, and see where that goes, because performing is also uh, a great love of mine. And uh, last season I, I had a, a solo with the 
the Houston Choral Society. Mm. Um, so I'm, I'm now that I've finished with my degree, I'm able to kind of branch out a little bit and, and try the, the performance route um, as well, as well as continuing research into uh, vocal pedagogy and vocal science as well. And so mm -hmm. vocal science would include what? So this is kind of where you get into the technical side right. of kind of the um, going into the kind of acoustics and how different harmonics are amplified by the voice when you have the, the proper technique and kind of what's all going on on the inside, mm -hmm. the things you can't really see uh, while you're while you're singing. Is it a bit of anatomy too? Oh yes, yeah, and for sure. And we, we definitely have the students learn all the different uh, muscles and cartilages and, and the ligaments that are, that are in the, lar the, the laryngeal area. Uh, historically, HBU has been known for its fine arts area, wouldn't you say, mm -hmm. for a number of years? Oh yes, and not, not just in music, but in the, uh, the visual arts and then the, uh, the cinematic arts is, is growing qu quite a bit. They're doing wonderful things. Fantastic. Well, David, thank you so much for joining us. You can learn more about the HBU School of Fine Arts at hbu.edu slash fine arts, F-I-N-E-A-R-T-S-S. We're going to show some footage of David singing, <laughs> and uh, we just appreciate so much you stopping by. You've got a great gift. Thank you're you. You're obviously blessed to the Lord in a phenomenal way. Mm -hmm. You can also call our 281-649-3211. Admissions will give you answers to questions about the HBU School of Fine Arts and uh, make the phone call and check out all the opportunity in the HBU School of Fine Arts. Thank you, David. Thank you very much.